Welcome back to another beginner electronics video on my oscillator series. I don't know how many more of these I'm going to do, but there, here's another one. Uh, this one's a little bit more complicated than the last one we did before. It was a little bit more theoretical last time. This one's a little bit more practical in terms of actually getting a pulse signal out of here. So we got some capacitors, we got some resistors, we got potentiometer over here uh, to see this thing in action. When I turn it all the way, or not all the way, when I turn it, you can see it pulsing a little faster. If I turn it in the opposite direction, you can see it slow down. So yeah, that's pretty much what we're gonna do. We're gonna take this thing apart and build it from scratch, go over the materials, and we'll take it from there. All right, in terms of the materials we're gonna be using, uh, we're gonna start off with the handy dandy breadboard. We're gonna have two 100 microfarad capacitors, two transistors, and these are the N2 or 2N222A NPN type transistor. So the specific thing to know about these pins is that there is a collector, a base, and an emitter. And based off of what type of transistor it is would determine what its pinouts are. We have one LED. We have one 10K resistor, two 1K resistors, and one 220 ohm resistor. We have a potentiometer. We have our trusty 9 volt battery. An assortment of jumper cables of differing lengths. About six in total over here. We also got some extra jumper cables over here. All right, we're just gonna go ahead and get right to building this thing. The first thing I'm gonna do, because I missed this up last time I made a video, was just connecting the two rails. And if you don't know how breadboards operate, it's pretty simple. You got rails that connect long ways and then rails that connect short ways in the middle. I'm just hooking up the positive and negative rails so I can use them respectively. I'm going to take one of my transistors. I'm going to orient it in the way that the flat side is facing me and the curved side is uh, facing out. If you look at the pin out of these, it would make sense to have, have it this way, at least if you're going to be doing it uh, the same way as I am. Uh, the first thing I'm going to do now that I have the transistors in place, I'm going to connect the emitter pin to the ground, and that is my left side. If you're facing the flat side of the transistor. The next thing I'm going to do, and if you don't know how transistors work, so essentially how this transistor works is that there's an emitter pin, oops, it's magnetized, is that there's an emitter pin, a base pin, and a collector pin. In this case, uh, when you're looking at the flat side, we got E, B, and C. The emitter and the collector are kind of like your negative and positive, and the base essentially Essentially, transistors are a little logic gate, and when a current or a voltage is applied to the base, it opens up the gate. So the next thing I'm going to add are my capacitors. I'm going to start on the left-hand side. I'm going to first put in the 220 uh, ohm resistor on the crisscross, so it's going to be the base coming from the right transistor. It's going to be going into this resistor, it's going to be going into the positive leg of the capacitor, and if you don't remember which one's the positive one, it's always the, the longer leg. The negative side of the capacitor is going to be connected to the collector side. Just 
it's actually a little far away. So the negative side is going to be connected to the collector pin of your left transistor. The next thing I'm going to add is a 1K resistor also to the negative end of the capacitor and that's going to be connected to the live. The positive rail. i got my positive rail going here. So yeah, a close-up view of what we got going on here. So you can kind of see that the flat side of the transistors are facing me. We got the emitter leg, emitter pin, which is the leftmost, connected to the ground. We have the bases of each of the transistors kind of crisscrossing to each capacitor. And so we have the base here connecting to a tran uh, resistor going to the capacitor. The capacitor has its negative connecting to the collector here and also to a resistor that's going into the live. I'm going to add the potentiometer over here and as just an aside right now because the way I have it rigged up is pretty finicky I'm just gonna Put the uh, positive side into the positive rail. And the negative is going to be on that same line as the positive part of the capacitor here. And then we can move on now to the right side of the oscillator. We're going to also start with the other capacitor. Its negative leg is going to connect to this blue crisscross over here. We are going to add the 10k resistor to that same leg, that negative leg, and it's going to be connected to the positive rail. We're going to take the LED, we're going to have its negative leg going into the positive side of the capacitor. And we're going to take the, uh, I think this is another 1k resistor that is going to protect our LED from burning out. And the last piece of this is adding one more leg, one more jumper from the collector of the right transistor to the positive leg here. And just another close up of what this looks like essentially. If I can get it to focus. Yeah, what we got going on the right side now. So the base of this transistor is connected to this capacitor, and that's going to be the negative leg. That's where this blue line is going, and it also has a 10K resistor on it to protect the capacitor. And then uh, the positive leg is connected to the collector side of this transistor, as well as the negative side of this LED. And the LED connects directly to the positive rail over here. And essentially the idea of this oscillator, uh, like I said earlier, these act as logic gates. And so the capacitors are gonna absorb electricity. Uh, once it reaches its threshold, it's gonna discharge it, sending a, a signal to one of the resistors. It's gonna send a signal to the LED and then vice versa the other capacitor will do the same while one capacitor is discharging the other one is charging and once it discharges it opens and the other one charges and opens and so on and so forth uh, when you increase the resistance or the capacitance it's going to slow down the oscillation of the uh, LED here and we're going to see that with the potentiometer. The potentiometer is going to uh, increase and decrease resistance. I forget, I mean, this one says B1, B2, 
B10K. I don't know if that stands for 10K resistance. Uh, but yeah, I think that's pretty much everything. We can plug it up and fire it up. I had removed the plugs here, the transist or for the potentiometer. So we're gonna plug it in as such with the negative going in the middle. We're gonna plug in our battery. We see it light up. Oh, and we see it oscillating there. And if I turn the knob a little bit, you can see it get a little faster. If I turn it all the way to one side, it seems to be steady. This is also something that I've come across with these, um, or this potentiometer. I'm not sure about this whole design and setup. If I push it to a certain point to where this becomes a solid, solid light, then it just stays that way and I can't get its pulse anymore. So when I have it all the way, all the way to the right, this is its max resistance. And it's going real slow. And go about middle, uh, about a, a little bit more, up into the point where it's almost essentially solid. And that's pretty much it. This is the schematic of the uh, circuit that we're working with. We have the two transistors down here. We have the capacitors over here. You can kind of see the crisscross where the bases go to their respective parts. Over here we have the potentiometer. Uh, we got some resistors. We got the nine volt bat battery up here. We got another resistor over here and we got the LED. And that's pretty much it. It looks a little complicated. This is probably the most tricky circuit I keep working with. I keep on having problems with it. Uh, the main troubleshooting parts that I have are the transistors, making sure I got my pins right, and just making sure I got all those connections. And sometimes the transistors fail, sometimes you blow out an LED, so always be mindful of those kinds of things. 